everybody. Happy Tuesday. Oh my gosh, y'all always have me cracking up in the chat. I love how y'all post these dancing memes and gifts. That intro is life, okay? So I hope you guys are doing good. I hope everybody had a wonderful Labor Day. Um, it's been a lot going on. I swear it's been crazy. But I had to do this show. I love you guys too. <laughs> I had to do this show um, just because I have learned so much in the past two weeks since this story broke. Like I knew some stuff about algorithms, but for so long, I kind of thought, you know, T, you're tripping, it's in your head. And you know, sometimes as black people, we don't want to be accused of seeing racism everywhere. You know, sometimes that gets thrown in our face, like, oh, y'all always see racism. You know, y'all can look under a bridge and you'll find racism. And it's like, no, it's not that. But it's just been like these weird feelings on social media, you know, the suppression um, of my YouTube channel, of just so many things that people bring to my attention all the time, and I don't have answers for it. I've talked to my YouTube partner manager, and it's like, yeah, you know, we see you working hard, but we don't know why um, you're no longer, why you can't get to a million, why you're only getting maybe in a whole month 200 subscribers when literally three years ago, in a month, I would get anywhere between five to 10,000 subscribers per month, you know, and it, it's all this, nobody knows anything. And um, when Corey did his video, when I tell you, cause I have been, you know, just kind of depressed, which is some of the stuff that goes on just on social media, YouTube, Instagram, you know, being silenced, literally the only place I've really had freedom to like, just talk and, you know, kind of feel free is Spotify is you know spotify live talking to you guys we can have real conversations meaningful conversations and not feel like we're being punished or censored you know and um when corey's video came out it just it's like i think every black creator especially bigger creators we just felt a sense of relief because so many times we're just dismissed as oh you should just be happy to be here that's the thing well at least you're making money you should just be happy to be here you know and it's like no i shouldn't just be happy to be here when i'm seeing you know a, a black makeup artist like jackie Ina, who's been on the platform for years only at three million subscribers meanwhile james charles and other people can come out of the blue you know not follow the rules and regulations get into all types of drama and be sitting at a pretty 14 million, 13 million, you know? And so when you have somebody who's black, like Corey Kenshin, and he's one of the biggest black gamers out here, and he's as child friendly and child safe as you can get, okay? Like I admit, I might, you know, curse every now and then, but he literally does not curse. He is very, very, he's very safe, okay? People watch him with their kids and all that stuff. And for him to come out, y'all don't understand how much he really put his platform at risk for saying that. Because so many times when people get really big, they don't want to address anything controversial, right? Racism, sexism, homophobia. They don't want to ruffle any feathers because they've made it into that quote unquote safe space. So for him to say, you know what, screw this. I know something is going on and I need to speak about this. Like I literally like was crying when I watched his video. Like, it was very emotional. Okay, let me breathe. Let me not cry now. It was emotional because people do not understand what black creators go through on social media. When you feel like you are being punished for no other reason than stating your opinion. When you can be respectful and you follow the rules and you know, you're, you're staying within community guidelines, but everything you put out is demonetized. Everything you put out is um, child restricted. But then when they do push stuff through the algorithm that's black related, it's always ratchetness. It's always beef. Like if it's black folks on YouTube beefing and doxing each other and cussing each other out, like I see that all up and down my timeline all the time. And it's like, why is this, why is this negativity always being pushed when it's drama, when it's gang drama, when people are yelling and, and screaming gang shit on Clubhouse? Why is that being pushed all over YouTube? But when it's like real conversations on how people of color, black people can better themselves or teach themselves different tricks and, tr and, and trades and stuff like that, it gets suppressed. And it really woke me up when I did my um, event in Atlanta, when I did my live show, 
And afterwards we did a whole Zoom meeting because it was such like a, an ecstatic feeling, one to meet, I mean, damn near 500 tea sippers came out, right? From like all over the country. We had the brothers who came through from the UK. And the vibe that whole weekend was such a vibe. It was so positive, you guys. No lie, not to toot my own horn, but everybody in the chat, if you came, put a teacup. It was live. Like, it was such a positive event. And so when we did the Zoom meeting to talk about it, they age restricted it. And I'm just like, are you serious? Like, that blew my mind. And when I reached out, they're like, well, I don't know. We don't know why it was age restricted. But imagine if my event had gotten shot up or there was a big ass brawl or a bunch of black folks fighting. You think they would have age restricted that? Absolutely not. But it seemed like because it was something positive and people were saying this was such a well put together event, I'm so proud of you. They age restricted that video. It I, like I had never seen nothing like that. And then when I went to appeal it, it got kicked back within two minutes where you knew nobody watched it because the, the Zoom meeting was about two hours. So no one watched it. And so I understood Corey's frustration. And this is why so many black content creators on YouTube are no longer making content. They're like, it's not worth it. They rather just go on Instagram or TikTok, do half the work, get a sponsorship deal and call it a day. It's not worth it to write out YouTube videos, to research, to, you know, do makeup videos and like all that filming, it takes time. Like these videos, I mean, sometimes I start working at seven o'clock in the morning and I don't get done till like almost seven, eight o'clock at night. You know, it's not like a nine to five job. There, There is no, oh, I get a lunch break at this time. I get to clock out at this time. When you work for yourself, you, you work literally 24 seven. You know, you sleep when you can. And the thing that people don't understand is that the algorithm punishes you, you know? So when people are like, T, you need to take a break. Yeah, I wanna take a break. But it's like, when you do, it literally punishes you when you're not making content. So it's almost like you end up being a slave to this AI machine where if you don't make content, they pull you out the algorithm, they punish you, and they say, well, you didn't make any videos for three days. Well, now we're going to put this person in your place and show you, you know, and, and it's really messed up. So this is why you have people who literally make videos every freaking day. I refuse to do that because my mental health is a lot more important and I don't want to sit here and, and edit every day and strain my eyes and sit in the same spot every single day. But I definitely drop content several times a week. But that's why some people do it every single day. Yep, people are saying in the chat, same thing with TikTok. Um, they unsubscribe people. Another thing that people are talking about with TikTok and with Snapchat is um, all of the colorism that's being perpetuated with these filters. How these filters, you know, they have beautiful filters, but I notice when you use them, they don't necessarily show your real skin tone. You know, they always make you a few shades lighter. They make your nose thinner, you know? So even with that, that's a form of AI. You know, it's perpetuating colorism, but in the digital form of white beautification. So, you know, and these are things that these young kids are being ingrained with because kids are on TikTok, they're on Snapchat. So when you look at yourself in this filter and everything looks perfect, you don't see a pimple, of course you're gonna think you look prettier with the filter on than your real face. Um, yes, there's, there is a project called Coded, Coded Bias on Netflix and they talk about that too. And especially if your skin is darker, you're not gonna be as likely to be recognized by some AI platforms. Even if you notice, I don't, this is even an example. Um, sometimes if you're in a public bathroom, um, what I would notice, because I travel a lot um, in the airports, different airports, and you put your hands under the soap dispenser, I notice that usually when people who are either lighter or white or Asian, when they put their hands under there, the soap comes out right away. When I put my hands under there, I'm literally fighting, like, come on, come on. Like, I'm going back and forth. Back. And forth. I don't know if you've noticed this, but it's a real thing, especially if you're dark skinned. Some of those AI dispensers, they don't recognize dark skin tones. It, it's the truth. Okay, good. I'm glad some of y'all have peeped that. Yes. And it's it gets embarrassing after a while because it's like, dang, this white lady just got soap and she's washing her hands. And I'm sitting here like, you know, playing hot potato with the damn soap dispenser. Like, what's really good? It, it's, it's the truth. Y'all can Google it. It, it really happens with soap dispensers. They don't always recognize darker hands. Um, another thing that's coming out too, um, cause y'all know I'm big into tech, in the self uh, car driving industry, 
it's getting to the point where they're having issues with some of the AIs not recognizing black bodies in the seats. So if you're getting into the seat of a, of a self-driving car and the darker you are, it may not start because it doesn't think you're there. You know, and it, it almost goes back to the old childhood saying, like, my people are like, um, you know, if you're like, if you're if you're dark or have dark fingers, like you better eat your Tootsie Rolls with gloves on for you bite your fingers. It's almost like it almost reminds me like that shit, like how people used to tease each other when they were kids. Like, what do you mean I'm getting into a self-driving car and it doesn't recognize me if I have on a T-shirt and shorts because it doesn't think that anything is there. So they're really trying to fix this. And the problem with, you know, with algorithms is that they're basically here as a process of rules. So they're there to collect statistical, uh, statistical data and analysis on different decision making um, situations, right? So they started using them because they felt like, okay, there's a lot of biases in the court system. There's a lot of biases in um, what other in housing and banking. So initially algorithms were, you know, they were put out there for like a good thing. Like, you know, humans can be sometimes biased. They can be sometimes racist. So let's try and eliminate that by using algorithms. Well, the problem is most of the people who are programming these algorithms, they're not necessarily people of color. And that's why I always say that we have to start, you know, getting our kids involved in tech letting our kids know that there are jobs. You know, these are jobs where they need people of color in because these algorithms are being based off of predominantly white male, right? Because those are most of the guys who are in the tech industry in Silicon Valley. No, not being racist, it's just truth, right? So because of that, the way they're programming it, these algorithms are not being found out to be just as biased. But the problem is with the algorithms, they don't possess a lot of transparency. And a lot of times you don't have access to the algorithm, right? So whereas, you know, if it's something done on paper, there's checks and balances. Your boss can say, okay, I wanna see how you filled out this form, how you came from, you know, A to Z. But with algorithms, everything is computerized. So if you don't understand code, there's no way for the average person to decipher it. Even when we talk to our YouTube reps about, you know, the algorithm and how does it work? They literally have no idea. They don't know. So that's the part that's just very frustrating because if people don't know, how can you regulate it? How can you audit it? You really can't, you know? So I just want to hear from you guys. I'm so glad we have over 700 people here so far. So if you guys want to talk, please raise your hand. I want to know y'all's experiences online, on social media. Um, we have a lot of people calling in, so please try and keep the conversation to about five minutes so we can get on to all the calls. So I'm going to start bringing people up. Um, don't say anything until um, I say your name. Let me go ahead and bring on Taylor. Taylor, go ahead and unmute your microphone. Hey, you can hear me? Yep, I can hear you perfectly. How are you? I'm doing good. I, I just want to say thank you for everything you do. I've been listening to you for a minute. My sister always be like, yo, you listen to Lovely T? Because me and you always got the same opinion. So I started checking in on you, and I just love your opinion. So I had to say that real quick. Thank uh, you so much. I do uh, social media. I'm really heavy on social media, uh, Instagram, TikTok. I go by House of Brushes. So I got a couple hundred thousand followers on mm -hmm. TikTok, and I do uh, like hair commentary. I do waves, do rags, and haircut barber commentary. So I realized that like, while I was going viral, a lot of the time, I would get community guidelines on my video, and I don't cuss. I don't, mm. use, I don't use bad drill music or nothing. Like, all I do is talk about hair, so. And I do, I do really good, and um, in my space, there's a lot of other black men. They, mm -hmm. a lot of us have six-figure brands. Uh, there's guys on YouTube, I don't know if you know who uh, 360 Juice is or PB the Gold or 360 Jeezy. But those guys have been around for a minute, and I can see, like, they don't get any brand deals. Right. And, uh, like I said, the algorithm just doesn't favor us at all. There's uh, YouTube channels that I watch. Like, I don't know if you're at a Gracie's Corner. That 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 channel doesn't even have a million subscribers yet, and that they've been viral for some years now. So. Mm -hmm. I yeah, just, uh, I mean, there's a lot of games that they play, and I'm glad you mentioned brand deals as well. Um, 
you know, you can have people in the same sector doing the same thing. Like, let's just say, for instance, makeup. And you'll see like where some of like the bigger white makeup gurus get these lucrative, I mean, hundreds of thousands of dollar brand deals. And the black girls are supposed to just be happy to have weave. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Uh, my, my content has went viral. Millions and millions of views. And it'd be like these uh, white hair pages. They'll pick up my content and it does millions of views. But the same video on my page, it'd be a couple thousand. It's like it's the same exact person. It's just like a different different page, different algorithm posting it. So yeah. It's, 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 it, I noticed it. So it's real depressing. Like you said, I haven't even got on YouTube. I have a strong following on both. But. It just stops me from even trying to take this content game further and being a slave to the content. Because like you said, every day you got to try to one up yourself just mm-hmm. to get the more. And I can see how the algorithm works. And then with uh, mortgages and everything, I just seen mm-hmm. that 80 percent of mortgages were denied for black yeah. people. Based off of algorithms, not because your credit is bad, you don't, you know, it's just based off of a, a set of codes. And that's the part that's so frustrating And, you know, what I feel, to be honest with you, I feel like a lot of these measures are being put in place now because black folks have found a way to make a revenue stream for themselves. Right. I don't know if you were here in the early days of social media. I've been around for a while. So Mm -hmm. in the early days of like YouTube and social media, I remember there was times I would be on the front page of YouTube. Just, you know, it was fair. It was just humans. Oh, okay, this girl's talking about something. I There's a few times I came in number eight on the whole YouTube website because they would put like the top 10 YouTube videos of like that week or whatever. Well, I'm And they were really I, fair. Mm-hmm. When I downloaded Spotify Live, they uh put you as it suggested. It was like the top four people. So I was like, that, that was real good to see right there. I know that's I right. That. Look at Spotify. So. Thank you. I'm really happy about that. They, they've really been just awesome. Spotify really has. But what I was saying about the whole YouTube thing, it seemed like once black folks were able to start monetizing it and getting money and creating a stream for themselves, it started bothering some of these companies. Case in point, let's take um, into consideration all the stuff that's going on with Airbnb. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now in Atlanta, um, people have been renting apartments and Airbnb in them out for years, but it was mainly white people. Let me keep that real. Uh, and a lot of these major cities, as soon as black folks in Texas, Atlanta and so many other metropolitan cities started doing the same thing. Now there's all these new rules and regulations and you will be fine. The apartments are not taking a cut of it. There's all these rules and regulations. Once people of color start getting involved and saying, well, hey, I can do that, too. And they start teaching classes and then it became more and more people doing it. Now it needs to be regulated. And I'm not saying that same, it shouldn't uh, be. FICO. Mm-hmm. It used to be FICO 8. And then I see all the black people we're doing credit building. We're getting our business credit together. Mm-hmm. Now they're working off FICO 10 now, which is like another type of credit score. So I just see the bars always move as we do better. And it's going to be hard to compete against these robots, especially like you said, we got the, the FM Mecca. I don't want to go off on old subjects and stuff. It's just it's getting hard to compete and it gets very depressing. Yeah, <laughs> it really does. And it's like you have to find something like innate and something that keeps you going to keep making content, you know, because it it is very unfair that people can do half the work and get rewarded. I mean, even think about the girls, the little black girls who were dancing on TikTok. And I remember when I first came on the TikTok, because I didn't know anything about the TikTok community and all that stuff. So I'm just on there and I kept getting recommended uh, Addison Ray and Charlie D'Amelio. I didn't know anything about these girls. I didn't know their backstory. I'm like, okay, these are some little pretty girls. They dance. You know, so I'm following them. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. They know all the little dancers. That's cool. And so then I remember, I think I had used one of their clips in my videos. And people started going off. Like, how can you put it in your video? I was like, put who? They're like, Addison Ray steals dances from black <laughs> girls. I'm like, I'm not 12. I'm not living on TikTok. You know, and then once I started researching and I found out the girls who did create the dances, how are the creator of the dances not getting $4 million Dunkin' Donut deals? But the person who took the dance is getting a $4 million Dunkin' Donut deal. Yeah, it the just doesn't make is, sense. It's the most depressing thing. Because like you said, like in my niche, like I said, it's a lot of six-figure guys. It's a lot of uh, big brands. Uh, I mean, as far as big brand deals, they don't even look our way. If they do, they'll come and just take from us and everything like that. And like I said, they, they'll see it. They will they may give us like, if it's... If it's something that's, like I said, buffoonery or, or goofy, then uh, they'll send us some viral video. But if, like I said, if it's something serious or just, like, niche-specific to black men, it's not going to many people at all. No. 
Well, thank you so much for calling in. It was good talking to you, Taylor. I appreciate everything. You keep doing your thing. You too. Thanks. Yo, what's up? Hey, tea sippers To listen to the rest of this podcast, please go to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, Tuned In, or AnchorFM.com, which is a free podcasting site. Thank you guys so much for the support, and stay tuned for the next video.